This is Queen Yon, one of the big support areas for the Central Highlands. Uh, and the ship on the left, I think, is a generator ship uh, putting electricity out. Uh, we're inside the we're inside the Michelin rubber plantation now. Uh, that's uh, Jonathan House, the uh, military history detachment commander. Uh, the Black Horse had taken over that unit uh, when I went to visit in seven seventy, I guess, and uh, it, it just uh, uh, just an interior shot. Now we're down in the Delta, and the next group of pictures we're going to show is of an embattled uh, little Catholic uh, group, uh, a church, uh, ten nuns, uh, some villagers surrounded by a very hostile uh, VC area. Uh, they were at the crossroads of two canals, and because of trees and because of power lines, there was only one way to fly in and fly out. So when you came in, they, uh, they might be surprised, but when you came in later, they wouldn't be. This is Father Kim. He's the one who walked around with a pistol on his uh, belt. And this is the village uh, from... Uh, uh, from the, the plaza there showing one of the canals. Uh, there were barbed wire, of course, completely around it. Uh, there was uh, uh, some, some defense, uh, some rough buffs, uh, no uh, Vietnamese army. Uh, you can see some of the trees, but you can't see the high tension lines. The, uh, they were abandoned. They weren't working anymore. That, uh, that kept the helicopters uh, coming in and leaving only in one direction. Because of that, when we went in, the pilot told us he would not set down completely, jump out, and when we came back, be perfectly ready to jump in the helicopter and leave. But as it was on the way out that afternoon, uh, we did take ground fire. The church. This is an interesting uh, uh, matter. This is where the priest lived, and it was assumed that he lived in the bedroom on the second floor. He never did. He always slept behind sandbags on the first floor, but you can see the hole where the VC had taken either a recoilless rifle or a, a rocket-propelled grenade and, uh, and tried to kill him. Uh, incidentally, in 71, 70, I guess, 70 or 71, I ran into one of my old uh, colleagues from the 11th Cav at the Saigon Airport, and he was an advisor then in the Delta, and he told me that Father Kim had died, but he had not been killed. He had died of, uh, of some kind of disease. Uh, there he is. Uh, he said the bishop uh, was tired of him of seeing pictures of him with a pistol on, and so he had to take his pistol off and uh, put it behind him to the left. You can see sort of the shadow of the stuff that's uh, piled behind the, uh, the left uh, uh, arch base. Uh, we were down there to interview the American advisory team, and, uh, and that's uh, the interview uh, uh, going on just to show you a field historian at work. Uh, a typical Delta scene, some, some fields are harvested, some are still wet. Uh, this, shows, this shows the effect of the B-52 uh, strikes. Uh, they were pretty devastating. This is an American advisor uh, group in, uh, in the Delta outside of Canto, and they, they stole the motto of the 101st Airborne and called themselves the, uh, the Bloody Bastards of Dong Gong.
We're on the top of uh, uh, Nui Ba Den, the uh, volcanic downtown Saigon. Uh, another overhead of Saigon. A special forces camp uh, with a triangular kind of uh, a defensive posture. I I took this. Be, uh, this is at Lai K, the First Infantry Division's headquarters, because of the of the uh, the constant coming and going of helicopters in. Uh, uh, in uh, their airfield, uh, and uh, that's an 11th Cav uh, helicopter you can see uh, in the center. Uh, a South Vietnamese convoy, uh, they outside of Tain In, uh, where uh, uh, this is the 9th Infantry Division base camp in the Delta. Uh, they uh, built it up uh, from uh, uh, dredging sand. It, it solidified quickly and uh, that's the Mekong behind you. Uh, a typical Delta scene. A typical convoy scene. That is a patrol boat river, a PBR. Uh, they, uh, uh, they were on many of the rivers, and uh, they were run mostly by military police and the Navy. The workhorse of the Vietnam War apparently continues to be the workhorse of the Air Force. Uh, that's a C-130 landing somewhere, probably, probably on K with the 4th Infantry Division. Uh, the GIs had pets everywhere. I just thought I'd take a picture of the dog. Uh, we had one in our tent about like that. This is an artillery emplacement at a base, at a uh, fire support base, uh, getting uh, ready to show us uh, what they call the Killer Junior round, which was a 105 round that pooped out about 300 yards and then exploded in all directions with canister. This is inside the uh, headquarters of U.S. Army Vietnam in the two-story uh, Butler buildings uh, that looked more like a college campus than anything else. And I also remind you all that I once had hair. This is the scene of a grand adventure. Uh, the background of this photograph is Cambodia. <clears throat> this is a small uh, 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 area, uh, a, a little fort right near the border uh, with three American advisors. The Special Forces captain was very nervous about taking us there because he knew that the unit had been infiltrated by some VC. Uh, when we got there, we had to go there by dugout in a, in a, uh, with a 25 horsepower Johnson uh, outboard motor and the, the captain was very nervous about ambush. We got us in there, and there was an honor guard. And that's Charles McDonald, and, uh, and there's the Special Forces captain on the right. We... Uh, we got there, and he was. They had uh, uh, about eight of the little troops uh, with M1 rifles, which were almost as big as they were, and they had the Wahau red neckerchief around their neck. And as they were reviewing the major, the cap, the history major with me, uh, the major from the history office, 
me and the Special Forces Captain heard an AK uh, being fired from the Cambodian side in three short bursts as if it were a signal. The captain got very nervous and said, we have to go right now, right now. And he grabbed McDonald and we went down to the dock and we got ready to get into the boat and he got into the boat and he pulled the, uh, the uh, lanyard on the, on the outboard motor. It had been loosened uh, while we were away from it. The whole motor went up in the air, the boat flipped over, the captain went in the water, uh, he came out of the water, he got on the radio, and he called for a helicopter right now. And uh, they did get one to us, and we got out and didn't take any ground fire. But uh, obviously uh, there was a setup uh, underway. This is that early morning haze that sort of hung over Vietnam. Uh, you could see where the American base camps were from the plumes of very narrow smoke going up in the air where they burned off the pots from the, uh, uh, from the outhouses. Uh, there are just so many beautiful mornings in Vietnam, and, uh, and we often made a lot of them. And I'll finish with, uh, with this. Okay, we're done.